So today I want to talk about the Mississippi River and saltwater intrusion. The Mississippi River has reached record lows this year, as the river's water levels drop to nearly 11 feet below normal in some areas. This decrease in water levels comes from a massive drought that is plaguing the United States, and likely being influenced by climate change. Parts of the Mississippi only experienced an inch of rainfall this past month, and if rain doesn't come soon, it may continue to exacerbate the already significant economic impact that has been caused by the mighty Mississippi drying up. Now, as I talked about nearly a month ago on this channel, the lower river levels have led to some barges not being able to travel through the river or needing to travel at reduced capacity. These barges normally transport important crops and other major exports, as well as moving fertilizer upriver to regions that typically grow these crops. Now, if you want to see more information on that, I shall link the video where I cover that in the description down below. So while these economic factors are significant, there needs to be more attention focused on another critical impact of these low river levels, namely saltwater intrusion from the Gulf of Mexico, which is having an impact on drinking water in parts of Louisiana right now. Now, when we typically talk about saltwater intrusion, we usually talk about coastal aquifers, such as in Florida or California. In these types of coastal locations, we can find situations where the rising sea levels in combination with water pumps create conditions where some of the underlying salinated water is pumped into wells and thus contaminates water supplies. We can actually see an example of what this looks like on screen, where under normal circumstances we see that the ocean, with its pockets of salt water underneath, push up against the fresh water which is under the land, and they form kind of a barrier. However, if the sea and ocean levels rise, in addition to the water being pumped significantly at a low level, we can see salt water pulled up through the uh, pump and therefore infiltrating the well, and hence we get salt water intrusion that damages uh, water supplies. Now, another typical case of saltwater intrusion occurs in low elevation coastal regions when storm surges or high tides lead to seawater spilling onto land and thus contaminating the aquifers as well as damaging the coastal crop production. Now, in the case of the Mississippi River, the situation is actually quite similar. Now, according to the Army Corps of Engineers, during most months of a typical year, the Mississippi River's volume of water flow is sufficient to prevent salt water from the Gulf of Mexico from intruding upstream into the Mississippi River above head of passes. Now, when the river's flow falls below a certain level, salt water may begin to move upriver from the Gulf. The intrusion of salt water upstream into the Mississippi River is a naturally occurring periodic condition. Now, we can actually see that on screen at the moment, where we can see an example of how the salt water wedge ends up pushing against the Mississippi River's water flow, and you get a similar effect to what we talked about in the coastal regions where the river flow ends up pushing back and creating a sort of barrier between the saltwater wedge and the Mississippi River's flow. Now, while this does occur somewhat naturally in cycles from time to time, the fact that we are seeing extended droughts in combination with record low levels in the Mississippi seems to indicate that climate change is exacerbating this problem. And the fear is that with time, this once-in-a-decade event could start to become more common and potentially become a normal and yearly event. Additionally, the reason this is happening has a lot to do with the low levels that we're seeing. The lower levels naturally will decrease the river's flow, allowing more salt water to infiltrate into the river. However, the additional dredging that's being done on the river to allow more ships and barges to pass through is enabling more salt water to flow from the gulf into the river. Now, adding to this the rising sea levels that are being caused by climate change, and you have the perfect storm to make this a more common event in the years to come, especially if the drought becomes part of the new normal. Now, the primary concern is that when this salt water travels upstream, it can affect municipal drinking water and industrial water supplies, which is exactly what we're seeing in Louisiana right now. Now, we actually have here that about 
3,000 out of the 24,000 residents in a Louisiana community south of New Orleans have been warned that salt water permeated their drinking water supply, posing a threat to residents with health risks. Now, while there is no boil water notice in effect at this time, residents with high blood pressure or heart health issues have been told to not drink the water as it now is comprised of an increased amount of sodium. Thankfully, the other contaminants that we can see seem to have not infiltrated the water system as of yet. Now, when this type of thing occurs, uh, this situation is usually dealt with by the Army Corps of Engineers, where they end up creating what's known as a salt water um, barrier sill. Now, this barrier sill is something that's developed uh, to prevent the salt water from moving upstream. Now, it's worth noting that this year, it actually seems that the Gulf's upwater stream seems to be prevailing. Now, this is a big deal. Since the saltwater intrusion is threatening both municipal drinking water supplies in the New Orleans uh, metro area and commercial water users like oil refineries that depend on fresh water from the Mississippi. And in this one parish, two of their three water treatment plants have been affected to the point where desalination units have had to be brought in. Now, it's worth noting that the Mississippi is actually not the only major river to have seen the increased impact of this uh, phenomenon this year. Um, reports seem to indicate that a similar issue is happening in the Yangtze River. Um, and while I'm not going to go into the details of that, or you can read it for yourself. It's currently on screen. And the Nile Delta is actually being absolutely devastated by salt water at this moment in time. Now, in the Nile Delta, farmers have actually seen salt water creep into farmland and kill off crops. And the only solution has been to have earth brought in to raise the level of the crops above the salted soil. Now, we can actually see an image of that on screen at the moment. Here we have an image of the salted land in the Nile Delta, just to show you how bad things are there. There's so much salt on the land there, and that's not going to allow for crops to grow anymore. Now, one thing that frustrates me when it comes to this topic is how little this aspect of the Mississippi drying up is being discussed. While it takes very little effort to find articles discussing the economic impacts this will have for exporters sending barges down the river, there's only a handful of smaller articles that even mention the saltwater intrusion into this one parish in Louisiana, let alone the possibility of this happening further upstream in time. I understand that the economic impact of these barges not traveling through the river will be significant and will be immediate, but we are potentially talking about contamination of the drinking water of a major city like New Orleans, if it gets bad enough either this year or in future years. That's not to mention the damage caused by salt water infiltrated onto land in the coming years and the effects it could have on the freshwater ecosystem. That said, corporations have done enough damage over the past decades to freshwater wetlands with the oil and gas pipelines we've pumped through the region. The unfortunate reality is that whenever we see this freshwater ecosystem damaged, the surrounding areas will become more susceptible to future hurricanes and disasters. And that will only exacerbate the issue even further, especially because it'll allow for more saltwater intrusion from those storms. The, this is only exacerbating the climate crisis in this region and is increasing future damage. And my greatest fear is that when we look at the Nile River right now, we're seeing aspects of the Mississippi River's future in the years to come. When salt water ends up devastating communities as we see rising sea levels and lower river levels due to climate change. In time, this could have a significant impact on people's lives as both the land and water becomes inhospitable in this region. Further, since this is a global issue impacting many coastal communities, it brings up a number of questions about the amount of fresh water available on the planet and what we're doing collectively to protect it and make sure that there's enough, especially as these mighty riverways start to dwindle. While I understand that it has its problems, desalination may end up becoming the only viable solution in time for coastal communities, 
and it will have to be something that gets taken care of regardless of profitability. Which unfortunately means it won't actually be a priority under our current economic system until we find a way to deal with and do something else. So with that said, if you've learned something here today, consider liking the video, subscribing, and leaving a comment, as well as joining my Discord. If you're in a financial place to do so, and only if you're in a financial place to do so, please do consider supporting me on Patreon as it goes a long way to helping this channel continue to produce content like this. The links for everything that I mentioned are in the description down below. With that said, my name is Anarchist Terra. Thank you so much for watching.